Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm your host, Rick. We've got our other host over on the far end over there. Hi. And we've sandwiched in Joe McCullough, <laughs> the creator of Frostgrave by Osprey Games. Uh, very cool. We get to bring him in, and he's going to help us finish up. Well, technically, he's going to finish up these dang uh, Rebel Troopers I started because... They're unsalvageable. I've been saying that all along. <laughs> no, just and kidding. You, and one of you is going to win these unsalvageable <laughs> min miniatures by uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Um, but yeah, welcome, Joe. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. And uh, yeah. Dave, congratulations on your Kickstarter. Thank you. Uh, it seems the community has risen and uh, supported you as we all knew they would. Yep. So I'm good. really excited. It's uh, definitely cool. I think um, everybody loves... Well, I say everybody loves the video that uh, that we shot here, that um, really helped me out with. But uh, nobody's nobody said they loved it, but nobody said they hated it. Perfect. So it's, yeah, spot on. Spot Success. On. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Uh, so You're welcome. Yep. For those of you that are tuning in, uh, just a little bit ago, uh, Joe and I did a uh, special episode of Building Character where we built uh, my warband that we'll be playing later this afternoon after painting Happy Little Minis. It won't be live, we're gonna pre-record it and put it out later, so you get to see uh, me destroy, destroy, literally destroy the terrain that we'll be playing on. <laughs> 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 um, so, but we're still painting the terrain makers in business. Yep. And it looks like uh, Dave has got some terrain that he's gonna continue working on. Yeah, um, so last week, last Thursday, we worked on, uh, I assembled a, this little pillbox here from Death Ray Designs, uh, which is quite cool. Um, we painted up, um, my friend Brian was in from Angry Monkey Gaming, and he painted up these two for us. Oh, where's the other one? There we go. Those are two. cool. And we got so much stuff on the table, it's amazing. Pew, uh, pew, 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 look pew, at that. Pew. That scale pew. is great. That is good scale. Yep, uh, absolutely perfect for it. So yeah, these look like fantastic uh, Imperial pillboxes, so I'm gonna move these to the side. And this one is uh, like a watchtower, kind of, or um, you could also use it as sort of the place where you get out of your ATST. Oh yeah. Or, or you jump onto it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> as if you're going Chewbacca. As it's going, as it's walking past. <laughs> yep. That so is yeah, cool. you can you can do that. But also, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure we included this in the in the whole package of stuff that we're giving away because. I can't see it's gone. You. It, it was right there yeah, a second ago. Cool. There we go. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's cool to have a nice big piece of terrain on the table. You yeah. can make it a central objective. You can do all sorts of craziness. Yeah, that, and it's also cool because it could be a cover for the ATST. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, definitely really cool. Not that the ATST needs it. No. <laughs> no. But you could fit like three or four ATRTs behind here as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very it's very cool. cool. And then if you look here on the, on the spinner, where, hold on, this isn't even on. <laughs> on the not spinner. On the unspinning spinner. You know, this is our Tesla spinner. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, no, our Elon Musk spinner. Where are you at, oh, little device? Let's just watch everything slide off the top. Really, no! Really should have wound it before the video. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now put it back in there. But it looks like the same company made these, like, little Tesla coils. Yep. Uh, so they're from uh, Death Ray Designs. Great group of guys. Yeah, definitely, definitely cool guys. Um, but yeah, so again, these ones were really nice and quick to paint up. They were primed black, uh, hit with a zenithal white prime, and then I just dry, dry brushed the the crazy sort of Tesla balls at the top. I like them. Uh, you, you, like, you like the Tesla balls? Did you give them a gloss finish? <laughs> I gave them a gloss finish, and I painted a little bit of uh, lightning on there as well, just a little arcs, but uh, I think it, they work out great again as objectives or um, just cool narrative sort of elements in the in your terrain. Yeah, they look so great. Spectacular. More randomly for who gets fried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they're not active. <laughs> Put in the objective between the three of them. Yep. Yep. That's pretty cool. Or you've got to have a, like a squad member. You, know, you have to have a squad member touching each one. Each one. Yeah. All in the same turn. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know. All, there's all sorts of cool objectives you can put on the board. I'm sure Joe will come up with some. <laughs> he has some already. He's yeah, it. you just gotta like, don't worry about it. Too so much. we probably should do some painting <laughs> here. I'm gonna move the boxer so everybody can watch, watch Joe work his magic. Yep. And because uh, that's why they tuned in. <laughs> as you should. Exactly. Uh, 
And the other thing we've got up there, which is in front of you. Yeah, this right here. So Battle Foam, uh, when I was at Gamma last week, yep. I, I walked by their booth, and our good friend Kanan, or Cannon. Cannon. Cannon yep. was there. Excellent. Uh, and he had this whole stack of stuff, and he's like, hey, give this away on your show. And, oh, fantastic. And uh, the Battle Foam guys were like, oh, yeah, and then, you know, really excited about it. So yep. when we ship the product out to the winner, it's going to be shipped in the Battle Foam. Yep. Uh, for, and it, uh, from what I understand, it looks really good with the miniatures inside. So we'll take some pictures of it as we're packing it to, yeah. to put, post them. So you know, make sure you go pick up some battle foam for your Star Wars Legion miniatures once uh, it comes out this this week. That's not really Thursday. giving Thursday. it away on the show. If you were give it away on the show, it would you, go would, to you. you should probably yeah. give it to me. Yeah, uh, just not, that's not happening. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but one of our one of our viewers who have been participating in the Star Wars Legion. Uh, uh, Glean, con Glean, Glean contest yep. will receive this as well in addition to all the Wave 1, one stuff and all the terrain that uh, Dave has so be. graciously built and, and painted and uh, along uh, spotlighted. With, along with Carrie and uh, Brian. Carrie, Brian, and then the miniatures have been so far been painted by myself, you, today Joe will be putting his hand to some. Uh, what? Mia. 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 Uh, Anna Mia and... Um, Jeff Jenkins, Jeff Jenkins, aka Rogue Shader, and Drew Carrington. And Drew Carrington. So a lot, we've had a lot of really talented individuals, and me. And Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> Working on this uh, awesome product by Fantasy Flight Games, and we do appreciate them uh, Definitely. Uh, giving this the opportunity to, to uh, paint and work with their product. It's, it's amazing. So let's get to it. Um, and again, I apologize. Because apparently I painted wrong. <laughs> not, not wrong exactly. <laughs> there, there are a bunch of different schools of thought yeah. on how you paint miniatures. And I'm one not of just them, having to ride the short bus to my school. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> However, you've got to do it, mate. However, you've got to do it. But um, no, one of them is uh, there's one that Joe has, which is you paint from the inside out. Paint the inside out. So start with flesh, um, then the eyes, I guess. Or do you need to start with um, the eyes? No, I did. Okay. Do that. So I'll do yeah all the flesh first, and then, and then yeah, just start doing things surrounding that. I don't yep. I don't know why. Come um, to think of it, I think, I guess that way because as I'm doing the fine detailing, if I go off it, I know I'm going to paint over that yeah. area later anyway. So, yeah. I think um, earlier in the in the stream earlier today, you mentioned Kev Dallymore. Yeah. Uh, he is very much that. Yeah. In that school of uh, school maybe of thought. Where I got it from. Possibly, yeah. He, I, a lot of the stuff I've seen from his, he starts with the eyes. Yeah. And builds out from there. And I start with the largest area, whatever it happens to be. Right. So if it's uh, armor, I'll start with that. If it's fatigues, I'll start with that. If it's skin, I'll start with that. So. so we Steve got says hi. One and Chiros says hello. Daniel right. says hello. And Walter says hello. Dang, everybody's yeah. here. Woohoo! How, how's everybody doing? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, did you get any gaming in? We, you know, tell us all the good things. Did you paint? I went up to Cold Wars in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah, how was that? On Saturday. It was good, yeah. It's good looking tables. Definitely cool. Online. Yeah, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of good games going on. Um, a lot of people having a lot of fun. Uh, the hotel that it's in, uh, the Lancaster Host, is in the midst of um, refurbishment. Okay. So it's kind of funny because it's been it, a lot of their shows have been there for for quite a long, long time. Okay. Over a decade. Did they move Historicon back there? Or yeah, uh, Historicon's back there this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, the last time it was there it was in two thousand and nine. But uh, yeah, so walking around the the hotel was like, oh, I don't remember this wall. Right. <laughs> or. What's going on in this large, <laughs> this much larger section? Of yeah, um, <laughs> not quite, right. not quite. But it was like, where do I do I turn left now, or do I go down the corridor a little bit more? But uh, nice. Uh, and that's a miniature game event as well. Yep, that's uh, put on the by the uh, by HMGS, which is the Historical Miniatures Gaming Society. Oh, okay. Um, it's one of their three HMGS East. It's one of their three shows during the year. Nice. Uh, Jeremy Rogers says that he built a height three mountain for the table, so something blocks the T forty seven. Oh, cool! That is pretty cool. What's up, Cannon? Are these guys wearing gloves? Uh, or does it matter? Yeah, the it, Rebel it, it doesn't matter. But I think I think generally they are. Okay. Yeah. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> Yours aren't. All right. 
No, nope, mine aren't. Mine are, are wearing are just hands. Some of you left <laughs> wearing <around>. hands. Wearing hands. <laughs> well, they're, they're wearing flesh gloves. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, don't make fun of my public schooling. <laughs> <laughs> I would never make fun of public schooling. You, you I'd make fun of. No, oh, but not your school. Not my schooling. Yep. My learning facility. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so some of the cool things that came out of Gamma that were off camera. Oh yeah. Um, got to uh, speak with uh, Alex Vallejo. Okay. From uh, Vallejo Paints, and uh, he was like, I love his accent, and yep. he's always like, Rick, you son of a bee, why are you not doing all the paints with my stuff? <laughs> and like every other word is a is an expletive. And it's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when he was learning English, he learned the best words. Right. <laughs> learned all the cuss words first. All the yeah. cuss words first. <laughs> uh, but he's a great guy. And uh, we do use Vallejo paints, so you guys know. Uh, uh, we also use Army War Painter War Paints and Citadel Paints and uh, P3 sometimes. Yep. Um, so we, we, we run the gamut. I usually use Vallejo's at home. Yeah. Yep. That's my, my go to paint. Nice. Do you have a cool uh, local store that you go to? Or? Um, not really. No. I, I literally moved in the last couple of months. All right. So kind of rediscovering the area. <laughs> but um, none of them, none of them carry Vallejos. So okay. it's always when I go to the shows, I usually come with a list of right. what I've run out of. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I always think I should write a list, and then I don't. Well, I've um, I recently. My, my paints were starting to sprawl, right. so I bought um, kind of a laser cut oh, tier, yeah. right? Which yep. Holds sixty, and I said I'm just I'm going to paint with sixty paints. Right. And I'm still I'm still working on exactly what those sixty are, <laughs> but I think I just I don't need more paints than this. I can I can mix them. Right. So I'm trying to get it down to that. So I'm going to kind of. Okay, so you're starting starting above sixty, and you're pairing it. Down. Yeah, basically, okay. I'm, you know. Because it's annoying, you got like something like, you know, jade green. I'll probably use that once in like uh, 10 years. Do I yeah. get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the drawer. There you go. You don't have to have it out on the, the painting table, but it's nice to. Yeah, so I do have some now that basically I've put away. And I said, if, if I don't get these out in the next year, they're going. Right, okay. <laughs> but if I do, I got to consider working them into the rotation <laughs> somehow. So. So James is, uh, says hi. Hi, James. Hey, James. He's like, a full table today. And so for those of you that don't know, uh, we, we've got Joe McCullough here. He's the uh, creator of Frostgrave, uh, the miniature skirmish game that takes place in the city of Frostgrave. It's the frozen so, city it's, of Frostgrave. It's, it's easy that it's way. It's easy that yeah. way, yeah. Uh, and the, and uh, Dave and Joe will both be at Adepticon this weekend, for those of you that might be in the area. At least we sure hope. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah the weather. The weather outside is kind of like. Uh, Frightful. Uh, 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 it is quite <laughs> delightful. No, that's the fire. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I was going to say it, was like a, it must be like a summer's day in Frostgrave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not. But, Walter uh, asks, if you have a basic craft paint, what sealer would you recommend? Ooh. For large terrain. For large terrain, ceiling, ceiling, large terrain. Um, that's a good question. Just take the spray and hold down. <laughs> hold down. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I do to is it basically to make sure that um, the paint stays on. I think so. Okay. Um, sorry, asking the question is if you had asked it rather than Walker. Um, <laughs> Walker, if you can tell us in the in the thing. Um, one thing I do with large pieces of terrain is uh, actually dilute some PVA glue in a, in a heavy duty spray bottle and sort of spray that on it at the end to keep everything sort of held down. Particularly if you've got uh, like flock or uh, other sort of grass textures you put on there as well. Okay. Or uh, you could use something like the uh, Army Painter Anti Matte Shine, no, Anti Shine <coughs> Matte Varnish or the um, GW Munitorium varnish. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah I was James using. says most sealers will be fine, but you may need to thin your paints a bit more than normal. Hmm? I oh. said James says most sealers will be fine, but you need to thin your paints a bit more than normal. Oh, if you're using craft paints? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
So I've had a casualty. A casualty? <laughs> yep. Oh. I gotta, so I apologize for that, any rustling and all that. That's a pretty amazing thing for uh, How did you do that for single piece miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Single piece no more. Nope. <laughs> oh, it just popped off its little peg there. I guess uh, it did, these did get transported to Gamma and back, so. Yeah. Um, I just got to glue it again. Is the glue over there? I've got some glue over here. Oh, thank gosh. <laughs> you, I don't think you're supposed to push down that hard with the brush. <laughs> I, well, I, I am a, a, you know, an ogre. <laughs> yep. Why can't I? <laughs> Rick doesn't know his own strength. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we got to meet uh, and talk to um, Alex Vallejo and then uh, Gregor, I, th I want to say that's his name. Uh, yep. Bruce Bolo. What? From uh, Dust. From Dust. Yeah. yeah. He spoke very highly of you uh, in regards to a certain uh, table you've made recently. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did I... I'll take that brush out of my mouth so I'm not <laughs> mumbling through it. Uh, yeah, I worked on a couple of display tables for uh, WYSIWYG games. For the uh, Planet of the Apes. Planet right? of the Apes, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, that's one where I definitely used that PVA spray bottle to um, make sure all of the forest floor was going to stick nice. uh, and not come loose in the crate because those crates are going to be shipped around. And yeah, who else did you talk to? Um, I saw uh, the guys from Catan Studios. I, uh, uh, so there's a. I'm not gonna say that it, it isn't gonna happen, but we might be getting some new special guests that'll be showing up on on our programming in the near future. Um, You're replacing me already. Already, Man. it's like, well, we can only we only get you for a day. I gotta <laughs> I gotta have I gotta have someone that's gonna be an attractor for a lifetime. <laughs> he, he wants to get rid of me. All right. Oh, these, these individuals uh, will never be able to get rid of you. Yeah? No. No, they're not strong enough. They're not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can grip this chair really tight. Ah! Um, so I talked to, uh, I've talked to like pretty much everybody from um, the majority of the game, the publishing companies. Yep. So there's so much good stuff coming out uh, yep. as far as the board games side go. Um, and then, of course, Mantic Games, they Brilliant. were there and they came up and we did a little interview with them. and. Uh, got to see some of the miniatures that they've got coming out from uh, The Walking Dead, All Out War. They got some new stuff in that coming I th out. I think I saw a uh, segment where you were talking with Ronnie about the uh, the terrain crates. That yes, been doing. I did talk to Ronnie about terrain crates. Where yeah. did I put those bags of terrain? Oh, curses! They didn't know. <laughs> <even here. laughs> I, uh, I had two little baggies I of you were terrain. Cleverly leading him in there. No, so I, I completely forgot about those baggies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like whoa. That's right. Are they over there? <laughs> Two little bags with like the green terrain in them, uh, clear ba plastic bags. If they're not, they're in my office. Which is also full of primer smell. Primer, which is fine. People yeah. should. Get them? If you don't mind, yeah. they're very cool. And they also have um, a Hellboy game coming out. With yeah. Miniatures. And they those just, miniatures look sick. Oh, yeah. Just they just they Hellboy. Yeah. Ah, ta da! Thank you, Leona. So, yeah, so we got some other terrain here from uh, Mantic, from their, uh, what did you call it, terrain crate? Terrain crate. Um, so, so this like is one of the dungeon crates, I guess. A cool little, like, uh, summoning uh, grid, a portal. The portal looks like a stargate. Oh. It's yes. very cool. Um, a, like an altar, a sacrificial altar piece. Yeah. Just kind of neat. And uh, this is, and this is just one of the little bits and pieces. And then, of course, it comes with uh, like a, a crow on a thing, and then like uh, the palantir. It does, yeah, basically is a palantir. And, and then uh, just some other neat little like uh, filler pieces, uh, like a little imp appearing from smoke from, that yeah. you put in the center. And yeah. it's actually built nice. to be able to be put there. Yeah, so all sorts of uh, cool little things. And then, of course, your um, your dungeon dressing pieces. So. A bunch of uh, crate or um, barrels, you know, stacked up barrels. Um, there's little skulls, uh, some more like treasure pieces, you know, more crates and barrels and stuff cool. that you would find in any like storage room or in, in a dungeon or a castle or keep or whatever. So, yeah. and there's just tons more other stuff that they're making, so, which is all amazing. 
So I told them they need to make some sci-fi stuff too. Well, they have a. Um, yes. They do have a sci-fi. They, they didn't show me any. Oh. So they don't like you. They, oh man. I don't like you either. I don't like you either. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, yeah, that's the. That's a, a new game that they've yeah. uh, or a game they've game. recently done. It's kind of um, dungeon crawler space. Yep. But uh, no, they have terrain crates for uh, sci-fi stuff as well. Okay. Nice. With uh, like pipes and vents and computer terminals and very cool. all the sort of stuff you'd want to see. Yeah, all the good things. In a spaceship or... Yeah, things you want to hide behind when you're shooting at stuff. Yeah. Or being shot at. Uh, Jordan, uh, Kenny, it's a turn-based war game similar to Rune Wars, Warhammer, mashed together. Um, the small stuff does make it cool. What are the miniatures for D&D or Pathfinder, Warhammer? Uh, yeah, these are Star Wars Legion that we're currently painting, uh, which is a fantasy flight game, Kenny. Um, it comes out this week, Thursday, at your local retailer. So go pick it up. And as you can see over by Dave, he's got the big tower that he's working on, which is cool. But right next to it is the ATST, which comes in this set as well. And it's just ridiculously cool. Yep. And now that you see it, Oop. Joe, because we mentioned it earlier. Yeah, there we go. Did you see the huge differences between that one and uh, the one from Imperial Assault? Yeah. The details are just ridiculous. Yeah. So much detail. Cool. And the size is significantly different. Okay. So good. So which parts are you getting stuck into painting there? You talking to me? Yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll start off with, Joe, what are you doing? I'm actually doing some highlighting on the, uh, the jackets, just because oh, cool. that seems to be the colors I pulled out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's cool. And I'm over here trying not to make a mess. Ah, oh, too late. <laughs> Since day one. Yep. Literally the worst. <laughs> so, Dave, you might have already said it, but what are you working on with the black? Uh, all right, okay. Um, no, I haven't said it. But uh, so I started off uh, just by giving all the edges, all the sharp edges on the um, tower a dry brush with uh, the Vallejo uh, light gray, just to sort of give that a nice sort of crispness around those edges. And now uh, I'm getting some of the Vallejo dark gray and uh, some Nuln oil from GW, so just a black wash uh, with out of the way. And uh, I've just been doing a little bit of shading around some of the panel lines so one of the cool things that you can do with MDF terrain oh, is knock over all the paint pots. Uh, you can see in there all the, the little details. So they've got lots of little rivets and panel lines and that sort of thing. Uh, they're all etched into the surface. So just by going along and running a sort of a thin wash or a darker wash around some of those, you can start to give a little bit of uh, sort of depth to it. An example of that is on the the door here for the one of the bunkers. So if Leona can zoom in on that. There we go. So you can see there that has kind of a 3D kind of look to it, but it's completely two. Uh, sorry, completely flat, two-dimensional there. It's just those little extra elements that you paint on it onto it will uh, make it pop. So that's what I'm going to do here. I wonder if I use your exciting cavalry band. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Before the show, I was telling Joe I was very excited about my new paint find, which is, I can't believe it's taken me this long to yeah, find it, though. Yeah, this has been yeah. a mainstay of mine for, for many years. Cavalry brown. Cavalry brown from Vallejo. A very kind of red, reddish brown. Good yeah. For, good for leather straps. Yep. And um, cause it's, a little, it's a little bright to use for big areas. Yeah. But I, I've, been, um, I've been using it. Sort of in between, I use charred brown as a like a base coat, mm. and then layer up with. Hmm? 
Tinny tin? Tinny tin. No, no. I, don't, I don't layer up with tinny tin. Oh, my bad. That's, that's your paint. That's the favorite one that you use. Uh, <laughs> no, Chad Brown is one of my favorites. So Chad Brown, Cavalry, um, Cavalry Brown, and then um, straight, or oh, uh, mix into a red. Right. For like a nice, rich red cloak for uniforms or something like that. Let's have a go. Something at the top. So I'm putting on some metallics on my weapon systems over here. Okay. That bad? Lots of metallics or? Not a lot of metallics. Just a little no, bit? Just, just highlighting. Cool. Right. Looks Rebel good. Rebel we weapons are kicked around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, if you watched um, The Last Jedi, one of the things I thought was very interesting was they talked about the whole arms race, how the people that are making the weapons are, are selling to both sides, mm -hmm. uh, the Imperials and the Rebels. So it, it's very much like, con, you know, Iran Contra affair type stuff, right? So yep. it's but what's funny is the Rebels are always getting like the junk, and the Imperials are getting the brand new because obviously they have more resources, I guess. But uh, so yeah, and every time you see Rebels in any show, it's like they're using the the second hand. Which does, does does make you wonder, since like they seem to be the only ones using X wings, do they just like build them and like take a hammer to them? Yeah, right? don't <laughs> they sell them? Yeah, and it's like well, we're selling them the old stuff. Like the what is it? The ATRT itself is an old Imperial <laughs> weapon system that the Rebels have refurbished as these little like walkers, and it's like why? <laughs> <laughs> Don't they have wealthy planets backing them? No. No. No, they do not. Brian Delaney says, no offense to Dave, we need an all bald guys with beards and tattoos episode. <laughs> Johnny stands yeah, we'll up in the we'll back. John, yeah, Johnny stands up. We'll, swi <laughs> we'll switch out. I'll, I'll run the, uh, I'll run the, the switcher. Mixer, the switcher. And Johnny can paint. Sound good, Brian? Or oh, are you asking this, to come back on why, the show? You know, it's bad to do a painting show. See? Yeah, you get the glare. See, if but we're I, doing an all look up at the ceiling show, then yeah. that'd be fun. <laughs> I do agree, though. Uh, maybe one day, like Thursday, while you're at uh, Adepticon, yep. maybe I'll bring in uh, Josh. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a beard, though. But he has a little, like, he has something. He has some facial hair. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call it. I don't know what that thing's <laughs> called that he has. Wandering eyebrow. <laughs> Is it like a goatee thing? A wandering eyebrow. It's like, uh, that would be fun. James says, get Drew. Or get Drew, yeah. Well, hopefully, in April, we can have Drew again. Brain's, Brian. Is it Brian or Brian? B R I E N? Brian. Brian. Yep. Uh, as in, in O'Brien, but without the O. Yeah. Uh, Brian, yeah, and Brian <laughs> says, I mean, he meant to bring bring him back with Drew. Oh, so, okay, right. Uh, the three of us, yeah, that would be pretty funny. That'd be crushing it. Yeah. yeah. So one of my things I did at Gen, the very first Gen Con I went at, well, since I've been working here, I went there and I did a little episode, like the first night yep. of, a, of something I was calling uh, bald, bearded bellies and back, bald, <laughs> bearded bellies and backpacks. Right. Because that's like... This is the look. This is the Gen Con look. It is. You know? Just yeah. saying. <laughs> I've, I've had people... You've been rocking it so long that... Yeah, well, I've had people who come up to me at cons and be like, oh, hey, didn't I just talk to you a few minutes ago? No. Mm -hmm. It's like, I saw someone that looked just like you. I was like, yeah, there are like 15 of us <laughs> walking around. You are here. the generic Gen yeah. Con attendee. I'm cookie 15, cutter. 15,000. <laughs> 15, thousands of this. <laughs> Yeah, with their backpacks and their inability to actually communicate with the other humans. Oh, the, the less that's exciting a Clone thing. Wars. Yeah. Well, that's, right. that's a terrifying <laughs> mental image right yeah. there. But, it, but it's... Yeah. Uh, not yeah. the most threatening, are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are the clones. <laughs> what? And we're all from the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. We, do, we, we are communicators. We just do it in our own fashion. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Excellent. 
Thomas says, I think the manufacturer of the X-Wing got screwed by the Empire, so they provide X-Wings to the Rebellion. There is an episode of Rebels where they steal the Y-Wings and another where they get the prototype for the B-Wings. Yeah, that was a great episode. But why do them never? Why do they never look brand new? That's <laughs> right, right off the factory line, they look <laughs> rusty and in need of uh, immediate repair. Actually, I guess Poe's looked pretty, pretty new. Didn't yeah, his I think his is the which X, got blown up. So yeah. that's why. Yeah. I think his is the X seventy one. Right. It's a modified uh, X wing. <laughs> the one. The one modified, which means that, which is what helps him be the best pilot in the in well, the like rebel. You're saying it ain't his skills. Maybe it's the machine. I think it's, uh, it might be a, a case of sort of they're, they're always testing the pilots on, on their dedication to the rebellion. <laughs> like, if he'll fly that, man, he's, well, he's the kind we want. There's, there's that sort of thing, but also the, uh, well, you can, stay, you can stay a little bit later and, uh, and work on your ship and, and personalize oh. it, and they're like, nah, <laughs> I'm off nah. to the bar. <laughs> okay, so we know he's not completely behind. <laughs> but if he gets drunk enough, it won't matter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, Rick, let me ask you this. Since the, uh, with the new movie Solo coming out, we've seen those interior shots of the Millennium Falcon looking like super pristine and clean. Yeah. Is this going to be the first time we've actually seen a clean ship in the Star Wars universe? Because no, it, it is not. Uh, it's a great question. It's the not. Prequels. The prequels. The, the princess's uh, silver yeah. ship was very pristine. And also yeah. in and The Last the Jedi, yeah. the ship they steal from the gambling planet was also very pristine. But that guy was, you know, whoever owned that ship was one of those high up, you know, uh, arms dealers who had money to have a very nice looking vessel. Right. But other than that, yeah, everything looks like crap. How <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know it's not Star Trek. Yeah. yeah ex <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> it's like, man, this ship's terrible. We must be in Star Wars. Star Wars. Right. Shots Here fired. We are. <laughs> Clive asks, I'm thinking it if I'm thinking to coming to the U.S. to a con. Which would you recommend? Adeptica. I'm more focused on RPG games oh, such as D&D. &D. For that uh, Gen, Con. Gen Con. Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Origins. Yeah, and I say cool. Origins for this reason only. Is they have a very good, for RPGs, they have a very good RPG experience that you can have there. And it's not as crowded as uh, Gen Con can be. But if you don't mind... Uh, gross levels of, of crowd, and not gross as in disgusting, but sometimes, but... Um, 60,000 60, people? 60,000 plus. 70, I think they had 80,000 last year. Yeah. Um, and they've already sold out from what I understand this year. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you have to take me then. I didn't buy a ticket. It is, it is, yeah. Gen Con's <laughs> well spread out though, so... It is. You know, as long yeah. as you don't try to rush in right in the morning. Correct. Yeah, you, sh you, know, you shouldn't have yeah. any problems. You but, won't get trampled. But Gen Con is where you would want to go to for your RPG experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. But if you want to try to go and do something like True Dungeon as well, Origins, because, again, True Dungeon at Gen Con is already sold out. You know, so you got to really pick and choose what you really want to make your experience and everything. So. That is also true of Gen Con. If you want a hotel, like, yeah. anywhere near... The venue, you, you got to book a year in advance. Yep. So book book now for next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I concur, Doctor. 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 <laughs> Brian says uh, people come up to me at cons and say, "Hey, you're the guy who I saw traveling with Dave Taylor. Where is he?" <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, Bri uh, Brian. He was on the show last Thursday. Brian and I uh, traveled to a lot of shows together. That is hilarious. And you do the, the social media photo, and mm -hmm. it's a selfie of me and Brian. And uh, that's perfect. Yeah. What's kind of funny is I kind of got the same kind of uh, conversation starters at Gamma this past week. Even though our people kind of already know that I do this show and I've been doing it for over a year now. Yep. They're like, "Wow, your show has gotten really good lately." <laughs> what do you mean lately? Lately? Yeah, even Johnny back there agrees. It has gotten really good lately. Right. <laughs> I think it was awesome last week. It was. I wasn't here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I like the positivity. Uh, but, you know, p people do say that, you know, 
uh, having you on the show, Joe, has just made this the best. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. well, I think people have had time to digest that now. Right. You know, really come to a conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I concur. Comment doctor. now. You know. I was Support. Gonna, I was going to say it took them way longer than 30 minutes to decide on me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that boat's still out. Yep. A lot of like, who? Huh? What? Never heard of them. <laughs> Penny Happy Little What? Why? They're, I'm wondering if, if you ever get to things like this. Uh, so you're on that painting thing, right? With, with Rick at uh, GTM. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get the, um, so you're on that, that painting like, stream thing with, uh, with the guy that, that wears the wig and looks like Bob Ross, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's Rick. Yeah, it's Rick. He's a character. <laughs> that guy. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. They use a different word than character. character but, right. <laughs> <laughs> the essential meaning is there, though. Yeah. yeah. They say it lovingly. Yeah. Kenny says, have fun painting, guys. Thanks, Thanks Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. Bye, Kenny. Bye. I miss Kenny. Already? Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, he just left. Yeah. Hold his memory in your heart. <laughs> He'll be back. Uh, Clive, cool. You, it may well be Gen Con out of interest. <laughs> What's Gary Con like? Oh, man. Gary, I've never been to Gary Con, but it's on my bucket list because it is a dedication con to Gary Gygax. And a lot of uh, industry pros, uh, game designers that are old TSR alumni, uh, individuals that have worked on Dungeons and & Dragons, and, and throughout the generations of its, um, you know, different uh, editions, first, second, third, and so forth. They, have, uh, they all go there. They pay homage to uh, Gary, and uh, and everything. And it's one where I would really like to go. Just one. I want. I want to sit down at St uh, Stefan Pork Porkney. Is that how you say his last name? Stefan Porkney, who does a, a Dwarven Forge. Oh, he does I'm a sure. big like thrash dungeon there. It's like, it's okay. like he just builds it, sets up this huge dungeon setting just to kill characters that will sit. Who dare to sit at his table? <laughs> All right, wow. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. Or even to sit down like and play a game with like Frank Menser or um, uh, um, Margaret Weiss if she were to sit down and play at a game. A, a, okay. a game. How cool would that be? It, it'd be like I don't know, watching Dave Taylor put together Star Wars Legion miniatures at Adepticon on Friday. I think it'd be far superior to that. <laughs> Who's the coolest Foster. person you've ever gotten a game with after me? Oh, after you? Yeah, after me. Well, we haven't gamed yet, so. <laughs> if, yeah, but it's, you know. It's um, almost. It's inevitable. It may exactly. as well have happened. All right, so. <laughs> I've already, had, we've already put the score up. I've had some, <laughs> I've had some really interesting encounters in the gaming world. <laughs> interesting. Um, so I did a charity RPG two years ago at Gen Con with Bruce Cordell, who works uh, for Monty Cook Games. He also did a lot of stuff with TSR, or with, Wizards and third edition and stuff, um, but uh, it was for his game using the cipher system called Fall or Gods of the Fall, where you basically role play. So all the gods in this realm are no longer exist, but the spark of divinity has found its way into certain players, and you are now playing to the potential of becoming a god in this realm. But you can go one of two ways: the evil path or the good path. And I was playing like a bard who could become the god of storytelling or the god of lies. And uh, it was really cool. So lies then? Yeah, I was totally <laughs> going that path. Super successful. <laughs> yeah, I was totally going that path. Um, so that was really fun. But many years ago when Gen Con was still in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and this was back when I used to LARP. <laughs> I did live action role playing. Why, why are you laughing? I'm just saying. All right. Not a lot of people are still look at that as like you know crazy, <laughs> um, but they had a uh, RPGA Living City live action game where it was like um, they had carnival games in this one big ballroom, and you come in as your RPGA character, so your D and D character, and uh, I had a character called Orion Frost, and I'm walking around, and um, Elminster shows up. And Elminster, as we all know, is uh, Ed Greenwood, who created the Forgotten Realms. Okay. And he comes up to me, and he's like, roll this dice. And then I'm like, um, 
you're Ed Greenwood. He's like, ah, oh, I've heard of this man. You know, he's, he's great <laughs> character as Elminster. Uh, yes, I've heard of Ed Greenwood. Uh, he is a very, you know, isn't he an elf? You know, and whatever. And I'm like, uh, so I'm having a little bit of a fanboy moment. <laughs> I roll the dice, and then uh, he gave me uh, a certificate that you would get with the RPGA of a treasure, a treasure chit, and it was a, uh, <clears throat> it was basically a short sword that, at the end of like, if I ever got knocked down to zero hit points, it would cast heal on me to half my hit point maximum. Okay. It was it, this short little like gladius bronze sword that my character now had. Saved my life a few times, that sword did. And I thank <laughs> Elminster for it. Excellent. <laughs> so that I think is one of my craziest cool. encounters in the in, in the gaming world. Um, how about you, Joe? Um, I didn't expect to have the question thrown back at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> my bad. No. He <laughs> always does that. Be so, careful. I guess <laughs> so when I was like 13, 14. Um, so I grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they, the college there had a little con, Hexacon, every year. And one year, um, Steve Jackson was, oh. the, was the guest of honor. Nice. And um, Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson Games? Yeah. Okay. Right. And um, one of my friends was running a GURPS Call of Cthulhu game. Okay. And so I got into that, even though I was probably like the youngest person at this con, because in those days, kids didn't really go to, to gaming cons, right. you know. Um, they, they really weren't the things they were now. And so that was, I don't, I don't remember a lot about it, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I was young, and, but I was impressionable. And, <laughs> <laughs> right. and I think it's one of the reasons I went on to play a lot of GURPS, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons why. It's like, I, I got to sit with the creator with this one. And, uh, I met him for the first time last year. Did you? Yeah. I, uh, I thought he was younger than me when I met him. Because I don't think that guy's aged. No, he's in I don't know, forty years. Because yeah. I met I I was pl I, I met him last year, but I was playing his games in the eighties with like Car Wars. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like well, the, this the, was the eighties that I'm talking yeah. about. How crazy is that? <laughs> that he probably had, doesn't look any different now than he did when you met him. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Actually, I got a great geek moment. I want I want to share because this yes. this just happened. Um, so I was at. I was at Dragon Meat. I was Dragon Meat. Dragon Meat, which is nice. uh, for those that don't know the the biggest RPG con in Britain, which puts it probably like number four hundred over uh, for, on this for you. list. I mean, it's, it's quite small, but, but because RPGs just aren't quite as big a thing. But um, the guest of honor there was uh, John Kavalik. Oh and, yeah, nice. And. Um, and for those of you that don't know who John Kavalik is, he does? Uh, well, Munchkin, Munchkin most famously does all the art for Munchkin. Yeah. I knew him. I, I had been a big fan from a long time from the Dork Tower, mm -hmm. um, back when the Dork Tower first came out. And I was in my prime as a role player. Yes. And that and Knights of the Dinner Table were like right. my go-to things. But anyway, so I, I was actually working at the show, but I had to go talk to some people. And um, I'd heard earlier over the announcement that he, he was signing cards upstairs. And I nice. had to go upstairs. And this was, this was two hours after they'd made that announcement. And I got up there, and there were only two people left in line after these two hours. And I thought, well, I'm just going to get in line and, and say hi. You know, right. because he'd actually he'd put up a tweet once saying that you know, he was going to try Frostgrave. So I'm like, wow, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so I waited in line, and um, you know, he, he, he was great. He was just giving everybody time and, and really mm -hmm. talking to people. And, and I got up there, and I introduced myself. And <laughs> he immediately reached down, pulled out a Frostgrave thing, and said, can you sign this? Awesome. And I was like, hey, this isn't how this works. I came to you <laughs> to, to get something signed. Then I realized I didn't have anything for him to sign because I didn't expect to have this encounter. Right. But he, luckily, he had a stack of Munchkin cards and signed one for me. And that is so I thought, cool. this is just... That's, cool. that's this, awesome. This is a great geek moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. Just, yep. This is just fantastic. So. That's cool. He actually uh, signed at our table last year at Gen Con. Did he? Yeah, so he does a, a, a comic strip in Game Trade Magazine yeah. every month. And so he came and he signed at our table, and that was the first time. So I met the same time I met Steve Jackson was the same okay. time I met him that's as good well. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that was a good, last year was a great year for me. <laughs> I got to sit down and talk to um, uh, Frank Mincer. Mm -hmm. Who you know basically made uh, the expert D and D box set and all the other little uh, D and D box sets that came out around that same time um, at TSR. He uh, he's a very interesting fellow. He's a he's a storyteller. You know, he, it's it's 
exactly why he is who he is in the industry, you know. Um, and he he runs a auction every year, and sometimes maybe two a year, where uh, different RPG products are auctioned off, and it's a private thing. And last the last one he did uh, that I participated in was um, all of the uh, bidders were given code names as it, as is, so you don't know who's bidding on what. Right. And we were all Pokemon as bidders. It was so funny. Um, but some really cool pieces go through his auction every year. And uh, it was kind of cool. I had already been in the auction, then I meet him at the show. And uh, it's it, it just, once it, it's so weird that if I were to tell 14, 15 year old Rick, if I could go back and say, hey, just so you know, all these people that you're reading their content and playing their games, you're gonna know them in the future. <laughs> and you're gonna be able to meet them and talk to them. I, I would have been like, you're stupid preacher, Rick. <laughs> I'm just a kid from Michigan. <laughs> but now here we are. It's a very interesting world. Yep. Both uh, Mini Painting Studio and One Inch Heroes say they really like Frostgrave and they think it's cool. a great game. Thanks, guys. <laughs> like, especially for building community. and. Yeah, it's, it's really, I think, it's got one of the better communities. I'm, I'm really lucky. I think the game attracts a certain type of player that is kind of a, a more narrative war gamer, which I think just kind of works well to people just having fun online. Yeah. It's not, you know, rule fights and such. It's just yeah. it's discussion yeah. and kind of shared creativity, which is what it's all about for me. And I'm glad the game's kind of attracted that mindset as well. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, The group I game with on a regular basis, um, ran a Frostgrave campaign uh, probably about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago. Um, sadly, I wasn't able to play in it. Um, my wife was traveling a lot for work, so. He's worked on this excuse for the whole time. Before the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Why the show. I didn't play the, the it. The whole drive in. I didn't play <laughs> it. Well, I had a long drive, because I had to come up with all sorts of things. So as long as, you <laughs> as, long as you're accepting this excuse. Yep, that's fine. Keep moving. Um, no. <laughs> But uh, no, my friend Mark, um, Mark Rayleigh used, uh, well, when you were talking about it before, you were talking about there's no sort of races in mm. the thing. The characters can be anything. He put together a dwarf warband, um, which, of course, obviously used exactly the same rules as everybody else. But uh, yeah, it was like, oh, that's a cool, that's a cool thing. You don't have to create special rules for dwarves or for orcs or for. No, you know, it's funny. I, like, I kind of started off under that mindset because it is kind of the, the general yeah. orcs have to have different rules than humans. But one of the things I found in a game like that, the smallest changes can have huge ramifications. So right. in a game that's essentially about moving on and grabbing treasure and running off, one point of movement is huge. So if you say all the elves have plus one movement and all the dwarves have minus one movement, the game's over. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So A, don't do that. It, it preserves <laughs> balance. But also, it just gives freedom for people. Oh, I, just, I want a dwarf war band, and I don't have to worry that they're going to be terrible because they're slow. Yeah. So I think that's super cool. Definitely. Where from um, in Michigan? Where are you from? In what part of Michigan? What part of Michigan are you from? Who's asking this? Keith Compton. Keith Compton. Does, does the answer change? It does. On who's asking. Where are you from, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> I've still got enemies in parts of Michigan. Yeah. Right? And, uh, uh, so that's a that's a very that's a long question or answer to a to a very short question uh, in that uh, I was born in Charlevoix, so just underneath the Mackinac Bridge, so I literally am a troll. It's a fact. <laughs> uh, but I grew up mainly in Harrison, Michigan. Uh, I also lived for uh, a year in Bay City in my high school years, Bay City, Michigan, near all Saginaw, and Flint. All I've got to say is that you've um, you've obviously been away from Michigan for too long because at no point did you raise your hand and point to where. Oh my well, God! You're you right. Uh, See, I could have done that. Yeah, but if I were to do that, Mackin so Mackinac Bridge would be up here. All right, Mackinac Bridge yeah, connects the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula. Yeah. So, did right you, were you were you on the UP or? I my grandparents lived in Newberry, okay. which is where the insane asylum is in uh, the Upper Peninsula. Okay. Um, just you know, fun tidbits, facts. fun facts, yep. fun facts, <laughs> factoids, little local lore, factlings. Keith says uh, Garden City outside Detroit. Okay, like near. Uh, uh, like not Farmington Hills, but um, I want to say Clemson. Is it Clemson? 
area? Sure. Right <laughs> Show us this, Leona. Leona knows. <laughs> she's, she's our Wikipedia. And then uh, Johnny's our Googleizer. what we do. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> uh, back to Frostgrave Mini Painting Studio said, my dad and I played through a lot of scenarios at home as well. It caters to a lot of different play styles. It really does, based mm -hmm. on what we talked about earlier. Like we mentioned, uh, I, I like a campaign that has some narrative and can be actually a sidebar from actual role playing. And then uh, if you're that grinder uh, military game type, it fits fits that niche as well. Yeah, and I guess, you know, if you don't want to be an overly offensive player, there are other ways to play the game. Um, I think it's, it's actually reached a slightly different and in some ways slightly broader audience than a lot of war games because it's not as war driven. Right. You know, it's, it is story driven and kind of goal, goal driven. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, so because it, you know, a, a couple of people have accused me of, of, of writing a war game that's just pushing and shoving, you know. <laughs> but you know, that, that's, that. And, and that's, you know, you some, with some wizards you. are like that, you yeah. know. And, it's like Black Friday the game. <laughs> get the stuff, get out. <laughs> there might be a fight here or there. That's it. <laughs> So when I do play Crossgrave, I'm going to have to, have to, to write sure that, that now. A, it's a special scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Black Friday. Black Friday. There's going to be a whole bunch of like uh, LED t TVs. <laughs> yeah, a whole bunch exactly. of white screen TVs. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but also, that, I mean, that's one of the great things. One of the, the great special things about having written a game is when you hear somebody say, like, me and my dad yeah, played. Cool or, you know, you know, I played with my kids. I, I dream of one day being able to play kids games with my kids, right. the oldest of whom is three and a half, so we haven't quite, <laughs> right. we haven't quite got to games of, you know, with it's, rules it, yet it's anyway. shapes so. and squares and boxes. Yeah. And, and then, you know. Yeah. She, she, she's actually starting to figure out rolling dice and, and moving a piece, so. Nice. We're, st we're starting slow. But, I like you it. You know, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. She'll so. be playing No Thank You Evil soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an amazing game as well. But at the same time, though, you're like, but don't get too interested in my figures. You know, <laughs> I spent a lot of time painting those. <laughs> That's where that water bottle comes in handy. <laughs> get away. Exactly. <laughs> but, Dad, you get that little so bit of like, cool. yes, they're gonna, they want to follow in my footsteps. And then you realize, oh, this is going to be so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> she does, she, my, my daughter does like to, to paint miniatures with me occasionally mm -hmm. and so far she hasn't noticed that I keep like giving her the same miniature like I right. just black over it and, no. you know <laughs> yeah there you go a oh, new nice. one <laughs> I think I think she's just about to get too old for that to work then yeah, so. yeah. She's and then notice, tragedy will, sure. will, will befall you because you'll <laughs> yeah. soon realize she's actually better yeah <laughs> excellent which is I think the case whenever we invite someone on the show here uh, an example being Mia Anna Mia who's a cosplayer um, she's done like two or three episodes with us uh, yep. overall, and all of her miniatures have been way better than anything I've seen. <laughs> it's like, how? How is this possible? How do you do it? Well, but she they, paints mm -hmm. armor. And but stuff, yeah, she so. paints armor. That's that's probably for worth. her cosplays. But th she's already artistically inclined and has a mm -hmm. has a knowledge of art in in, in regards to uh, you know her cosplays and other things as well. But she, uh, yeah, she's just better. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's true. Yep. That is also true. <laughs> that can be your excuse. Awesome. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, that's my, that's my excuse. I have these hands. I mean, it's hands. just, yeah. It's just like anything else, isn't it? The more you do it, the better you get. And yep. I don't know. <laughs> I've been doing this. The more the rest of us do it, the better we get. <laughs> it's what, 105 episodes now? <laughs> <laughs> You're away for and, two of them. Until you realize you need glasses, mine actually went down for about a year until I realized I right. can't actually see the minis anymore. No wonder I'm having trouble painting them. Yep. Uh, We're the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So there, that's pretty much our show today here at Painting Happy with Minis. It's been about an hour, which is what Already we are hour? allocated. <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we started a little bit late. So. Did we? Yeah. Really. <laughs> You're just saying... You need He's to, just I'm, trying to get rid of us. I'm telling you, you need to finish those dudes. I'm going to I'm finish not taking them dudes. home because I'm going to Adepticon tomorrow. I am going to finish these dudes. <laughs> Where he'll get bro. more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to finish these dudes, bro. Finish the dudes, bro. <laughs> 
But, Finish the uh, dude bros. So yeah. I, tr I tried to paint my gun in root brick style. How did I do? Perfect. Awesome. It worked. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so we, as always, we appreciate everybody that joins us and participates in the chat and watches us in this. As I've, I, as I also learned at Gamma, there are a lot of retailers that broadcast our programming in their stores. Awesome. Yeah, I was, they're like, yeah, we, you know, we 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 put you up on our on our uh, monitors, and uh, we put we we don't let the sound go because, you know, <laughs> don't uh, hear what they have to say. Yeah, we don't, they don't want to hear anything we're saying, <laughs> but that but that's okay. And we, but it's that, it's, it's, it's funny, and it's it's, it's so only been five or seven times that Rick's dropped the F bomb or something. Yeah, yeah. Sure. maybe in 107 episodes, that's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but we appreciate all of it. you guys, uh, you know, that, that share our content, are participating in our community here as we're live on Facebook, but also those of you that are in our Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, uh, the, the, the miniatures that you guys paint and yep. share and the questions you guys ask are just amazing and the community there is just awesome and we appreciate it. But the best place to start those communities is at your friendly local game store. Go to your friendly local, local game store. If you are a painter, share your, your ability, teach people at the store if they have painting stations there, you know, set up and help others become better painters. Uh, if, you're, if you don't know how to paint or if you're just getting into the hobby, your friendly local game store is going to be one of the best places to get pointers, the product that you're going to need to paint with. Uh, and also, again, finding more people in the community to, to participate in that will help motivate you, drive you, and teach you to become a better yep. painter like we've got here with everybody we bring on the show. I learn a little something different about, what are we doing, painting? Um, about this hobby that we all truly love. <laughs> if you are at Adepticon, that some please. of us truly love. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you are at Adepticon, some of us are vaguely associated. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. And hangers on. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are at Adepticon this weekend, uh, please find Dave and Joe here yeah, and say, say hi. Uh, learn more about Frostgrave at Osprey.com, OspreyGames.com, or just do a Google search for Osprey Games and you can find out all the information you need to know about Frostgrave. To learn more about Star Wars Legion, go to Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, on Facebook and all their social media and everything. And if you have not yet backed Dave's Kickstarter for uh, <laughs> Armies, Legions, and Hordes, that's what it's called, right? There it is, the postcard. Postcards. Yep. Uh, please uh, go to Kickstarter and check that out. Uh, back it if you can. If, you, if you're not able to back it, please share it amongst share your it. friends because there might be someone amongst your peer group that might find it uh, of value for them and will back it. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. <laughs> for sure. And uh, on that note, I'm Rick. I'm Dave. This has been... Joe? Joe. Here, right here. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean it has been? Has been. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not, it always sounds he, ominous when he, he says that. He will not be appearing again. Uh. Um, but we appreciate uh, anyway. Joe coming up and being a participant in this today, and we'll be seeing you on the, what we're going to film after, right after this as well. We're going to yep. play some Frostgrave and everything, so uh, keep an eye out for that being posted later this week. And on that note, we'll awesome. see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.